Hello, and welcome to the uh, Coastal Stoic. Uh, my name is Craig Bell, coming to you from the central east coast of Florida. Um, kind of a crazy place to be right now, but that's all right. I was going to come to you from the outside, but they got workers next door, and it's really windy outside, so here we are on the inside. Um, I'm going to adjust this, see if that helps a bit. Um, so last Friday, I went to the lab. I needed to get blood work done, so I walked in, um, had an appointment, gave my paperwork, and all situated. But there was a woman there, and she was not happy. I mean, she was letting her dissatisfaction of the system uh, be heard by all. And um, the term, as she was going, the term Karen came to mind. And uh, I uh, started chuckling in that Karen or Ken, and ironically I have a brother, brother-in-law and a sister-in-law named Ken and Karen. Um, but this notion, first of all, I'm sorry to the Kens and Karens out there who are just super chill and doing fine. But this woman um, was really not happy and letting her frustrations out on the people that had no power over her situation. They were just the messengers. They were the people processing and getting people um, their appointments and whatnot situated. And uh, she, she would not stop. And um, I felt badly for them. Um, she did it, but I said she wouldn't, she eventually does stop and moves on with her angst. But what I found interesting is, as I'm watching this, as I'm watching this whole scene unfold, I thought, first of all, I'm frustrated with this lady. But then I thought to myself, I have, I have no idea what she's going on. With. I have no idea what her world's like. I have no idea she may, she was older than I. Um, she could be coming into this ill. She may have somebody at home ill. She may have something happen in her life. I have no idea why she's upset. So I'm not gonna judge her for like her space, but I still don't know that she needed to react the way that she did in that particular space. And that's kind of it. And it made me think of Africa and permit fishing. And Africa and permit fishing uh, might seem like strange bedfellows to this this woman who was venting her frustrations, but let me explain. So, as so many people, especially people of my uh, generation, uh, have or experienced in their early lives, as I would sit as a young child at the dinner table and not want to eat my broccoli or whatever it was uh, had been cooked for me at that time. I was incapable of understanding the enormity of budgets and food and consumption and waste and whatnot. I guess I was being taught these things, but invariably what happens is, <laughs> so back in the 70s, do you know how lucky you are? There are kids starving in Africa who would kill for this food. And of course, you know, you're whether it's an internal or external expression goes to, well, they can have it. Not thinking or knowing that, you know, they, there's no way you're going to get this food to that person and uh, logistics and all that are just impractical and nonsensical. However, the whole situation seemed to be nonsensical to me and that later in life. At the time, I was just frustrated. I didn't want to eat the green beans. They wanted me to eat the green beans. Was it healthy for me? Yes. Should I have eaten them? Yes. Were they there? Yes. But I didn't like them, so I don't want to eat them. So not wanting to eat them, the frustration and battle came out. Uh, so <laughs> in my world, in my house, they were what were breakfast and then what you were your lunch or your next dinner until you consumed them. So eventually we learned to just bite the bullet, consume them, or wait for the opportune moment and feed them to the dogs that were invariably ready or willing to uh, take them over from the uh, floor if they happened to fall onto the floor. Anyhow, it was this notion of entitlement, this notion of 
and I, I say that in a way to, I'm, I'm not mad at myself, but my, my kids did the similar, a similar thing. And so both of my boys growing up, both of our boys growing up, did not want to eat. We never used the whole Africa phrase. Um, and ironically, uh, as they're saying that people, the kids are starving in Africa, they were also starving in Orlando. So where I grew up, um, we people need food. But it was this, for me as a child, it was this lack of understanding of the world, lack of understanding of other people, and this like selfish idea of, of who I was. And we can't, as children, we can't help, we, 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 we can't comprehend those things. And I get that. But watching this lady, it made me think of her not considering the people who were in the waiting room, not considering the people, they, she had no idea what the people going behind the counter were going, they, she didn't know their lives. I saw a thing by Adam Grant the other day and it had a big circle, said what's going on in someone's life and then a little tiny circle. And it's like, that's what you know about it. Like we have no idea what's happening. So we pass judgment or we get angry or we get frustrated and we vent and we talk to the people who have no impact on us or impact on the situation, but it's our frustration. Not knowing like, they might be going through things. They might have situations. They, I don't know. So I need to like question myself. And that's what made me think of permit fishing. And if I may, and it's my channel. So I'm going to go on. Um, brings me to permit fishing. Now, permit are a sport fish, um, tropical. They are uh, beautiful fish. They are elusive to me at least i've never caught one um but one year having never caught one i thought to myself we go down to the keys oftentimes and in going down to the keys i thought to myself and beth we were there we had our new boat a new boat one of our new boats and we've gone through so many boats but we take the boat down i'm like i just don't know how to do this. so we're good we're going to get a guide who knows how to catch the permit take us out show us the ropes, and then maybe we can learn. Um, so we go to a place called Parmer's where we uh, stay on Little Torch Key. Great little place, great little location, beautiful little bay area there. And they get me in touch with this guy, Scott, who shows up with his beautiful little Hell's Bay skiff in the marina there at Parmer's Resort on Little Torch Key. And we get ready to go fishing. He's like, what do you want to do? And we want to catch permit. So we had communicated that before. He shows up with the preferred bait of permit, which are small blue crabs. And uh, permit, like you say, they're tropical fish. They're kind of disc-like. Uh, they oftentimes, during certain times of the year, they feed up on the flats. Other times they're out um, uh, um, spawning and they are out in deeper water on wrecks and reefs on the outside. But in this particular time, we're looking for them on the flats. So you'll see there's tails going. You'll see the schools of them moving across real shallow water. So that's what we're hoping for. So Scott picks us up in this beautiful little boat, and off we cruise. And we have the crabs, and he's got the, pole, the, the casting platform up on the bow. He's got his polling platform on the back. He's about my age. A few years ago, he does uh, chartering in the Keys. Um, and he also, in the winter and, and fall, I think some spring, and he uh, does some uh, guiding out in Montana, Wyoming area um, in the summertime. Super nice guy. We get out to this area of where he's looking for us to get put up on permit. He cuts the engine. We get up on, I get up on the polling, the, the casting platform up on the bow. I have a crab ready to pitch out to permit when we see them, if we see them, and he's on the polling platform behind me, pushing with this 20 whatever foot pole, um, pushing us across this shallow water. And we go, and we're looking, and we're looking, and it's a beautiful day, and Beth and I are out there, and it's just a gorgeous morning, and no permit. <laughs> I don't know how many, just hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of yards he pulled across, but there were no fish. We didn't see any permit at all. And he's like, okay, uh, this must be the tide, must be they're not here. I saw them here yesterday. They're not here right now. What do you want to do? And we're like, I don't know. What, what, what are your suggestions? He goes, you know, there's a flat over here we can go looking for bonefish. I said, you know what? Never caught a bonefish. Let's go try that. So he had the gear for that as well. We cruise off of this space 
head over to this other flat, beautiful expanse of area. It's maybe a foot deep, maybe not even. And he gets back on the polling platform. It's just crystal clear day. Sun's out. The water is nice and calm. The water is crystal clear. And we're just cruising. And he's polling. And we're up on the casting platform. He's on the polling platform. And we're going. And we're going. And that's why they call it fishing and not catching because we looked for bonefish and he's going, I'm so sorry, like, I can't believe it. And I'm like, dude, like, it's okay. Here we are on a beautiful day. And he came out with it. He said, yeah, no babies are dying. I'm like, um, what? And uh, we, he comes down from the polling platform. I come down from the casting platform. We're getting prepped to go make another move and we're having something to drink, a little snack. He's like, yeah, he said, this guy who comes out on my boat, the first time he comes out with me often, he says, and, uh, but the first time he came out, we were doing a similar thing. We were looking for fish and I'm polling and I'm polling and we're not catching anything. I and mean, we're not seeing anything. We're not on the fish. And I felt so badly and I was newer in this and I'm pushing and I'm pushing and pushing trying to get this guy to do some fish and we can't find them, we can't find them, can't find them. And the guy turned around to me, I'm, I'm so apologetic, I'm, I'm so sorry, I thought they would be here. And the guy turns around and goes, hey man, no baby's dying. This guy comes out with Scott, turns around to him and says, hey, no babies are dying. Scott, similar to us, the first time he hears the phrase, says, what? He's like, no babies dying, man. Scott's like, okay, context, I need some more. And this guy, who he knew was a physician, but he didn't know what kind of physician he was, is what I described and what Scott had described, I believe he said a neonatal cardiologist, a pediatric cardiologist, um, possibly, regardless of the terminology, this man's job was taking care of babies' hearts. And when I say taking care of babies' hearts, I have to wrap my head around that because when I think of cardiologist, I think of you have too much cholesterol, you have this, you have that, you have to go check your, your blood pressure and whatnot. Strokes. I'm thinking older people. I don't think right off the bat about children and specifically babies needing a cardiologist and this guy was a surgeon so I try to think about a baby newly born or very young having a heart condition or heart issue that needs general anesthesia needs someone to go in and perform surgery open heart surgery on this tiny human this little person and this man going in to a child's heart and fixing anomalies fixing broken parts and i guess maybe the right way to say would be trying to because he looks back at scott and says dude there's no babies dying and that being said i Wrapping my head around that is, he was telling Scott that on a, and I want to say daily basis, but a frequent basis, he has to go and tell parents what we did didn't work. We put your child under general anesthesia. We opened the chest cavity up and then we did surgery and it didn't work. And your child will not live or is not alive. And on the converse of that, he will also be able to go out to parents and say, hey, it worked. Your kid's gonna be fine. Your kid's gonna be all right. Your kid's gonna, like, that happens too, but to be in a world to where those are the two conversations you have with the parents, it worked or it didn't. And when it didn't, the consequence is catastrophic. So here he is 
on the casting platform of this beautiful Hell's Bay little flat skiff. And Scott's back there pulling frantically trying to find bonefish in the flats in the Florida Keys on a beautiful day. And Scott's stressed about not catching fish and not finding fish. And this man puts in perspective and says, dude, here's my world. And I'm on a boat in the Keys on a beautiful day, throwing bait out to a fish, trying to catch this fish. And if that works out, great. And if it doesn't work out, great. Because I'm not there and my world is not wrapped up and, and I can't even imagine the equipment that the person would have to use to be able to see and to be able to do what he does. And that's not where I am right now. I'll go back to it and I'll do well with it and I will fix as many as I can fix and console those who I have to console. But at this moment, everything's okay. Fish or no fish. And I think to myself, yeah, so ever since that trip that Beth and I took, and by the way, we didn't catch any bonefish. We eventually did see some, but they were too close to them by the time we saw them and they spooked. But we did go find a spot where we had, we did find some juvenile tarpon and uh, we were able to go out there and Beth was able to land her first tarpon. It ended up being a successful day. Scott was super nice. Um, and it just, it was great. But more than the tarpon, ever since that trip, Beth and I, when we look and shit's hitting the fan, like whether it's when my mom was declining and living with us, or when her mom was diagnosed with Alzheimer's, or whatever the issue, whether it's a financial thing or what have you, I even have, we're having a pool put in and I get so frustrated, like they don't show up and they don't show up and the work's not getting done to where they were. I wanted to have it done. And Beth will look at me and say, Craig, dude, no babies dying, man. Chill the fuck out. Just chill out. I'm like, yeah, you're right. I am letting something silly build up in my head, which just in this moment makes me think of another phrase that we heard as children. And it was, don't make a mountain out of a molehill. And that, in the end, is it. Making a mountain out of a molehill, making more out of something that it actually is, and providing perspective. In my classroom, there's a, this, this particular year was really funny. One of, my, one of the periods of my, uh, in my day, uh, the group of students were, they're, they're all, it's interesting how the groups of students have different personalities. And this particular group of students was really interesting in that the word for the year for them was perspective. Whenever something would come up in a discussion about a rhetorical analysis of Emerson, or if we're talking about Tobias Wolf, or we're talking about Virginia Wolf, whomever we are, whoever we're talking, whomever we're talking about, this one student would say, "Well, Mr. Bell, it's all about perspective," and it kind of is. And I would say to him, "Well, isn't everything?" And it kind of is, and. I think in the end, we, society, our group, our crew, would be so much better off if we thought about others' perspectives too, and not just our own. So this woman who's upset at the situation of not having the orders for her lab work in the right place at the right time, and them having to try to coordinate with the central call center to get the orders in so that she can have her lab work done. Like that's to me, at least from my perspective, not worth being unkind to somebody else, but I don't live that woman's life. I don't know. Now, when I look and I say, you, know, you go on, on social media, you're on YouTube, you're on Instagram, and you see these people who 
Uh, one example was a, a two guys who were, had been spearfishing, killed a lobster, and were cooking lobster in this parking lot. And apparently it was a parking lot for these condos. There were plenty of spaces open, but this woman who was part of the condo association came out and just read them the riot act and was, you need to leave, and I'm calling the police, and I can't believe you're being so rude. And they're like, we're just, we just want to finish it. They're cooking their lobster right there catch and cook type of thing. They weren't being rude to her. They were happy to leave. They were hoping they could just finish up eating their lobster roll sandwiches. Um, she was not having it. I don't, I don't understand that. Like, I don't understand why, you, why couldn't the conversation just be, okay, finish it up. And then, but these are parking spaces for people. So you need to, you know, once you're done here, go ahead and take off if you would. And then, you know, there are park, there's a parking lot down the way for public parking. Like, speak to people civilly. Think about them. Think about where they might be. Think about what they might be doing and take them into consideration. So when I find myself wasteful, I'm not considering or not thinking that, oh my gosh, kids are just starving in Africa or here in Brevard County. I mean, I do think about that, but I'm not like, well, let me get that to them. I was like, you know, just understanding how blessed and fortunate I am and reminding myself and figuring out that even when my family, when we were, and my, myself had zero money and zero like influence at all, like we still found positive things to see. And that is not to say, just focus on the positive. You, people suffering. You need to fix things. You need to do things. But put everything in perspective. And for Beth and I, that is oftentimes the gauge of there's no babies dying. Now, that's an extreme for sure. But on that beautiful day in the flats off of uh, Little Torch Key and um, um, Big Pine Key, that was a memorable and moving moment for both Beth and I, and I appreciate Scott sharing that with us. And since then, we have used that on numerous occasions to help us cope with challenging and difficult situations. Um, I hope for you, um, it can help you or maybe provide you with some food for thought uh, I encourage or hope for any comments that you might have, any gaps that I might have, any things that um, you can add to what, uh, what I'm putting out here, any suggestions on readings or where to go to see more ideas about this. I'm open to that also. And I hope you enjoyed the uh, story and the thoughts for today. And I hope you have a great day. And Here's to putting things in perspective.